All right, welcome everybody to our second live session of week two for DES 305 Web Portfolio Design. I am Shannon McNamara, your graphic arts instructor. And so far it's just me tonight, but we'll see if some people pop in. And if not, I just want to say hi to everybody at home. All right, let's take a look at our agenda for this evening. I don't, I'll go into the announcements, but I don't believe I have too many announcements in there. We're going to discuss responsive design, then we're going to get back into Muse and we'll do some responsive design with our breakpoints and add some SEO. Those are those alt tags and titles to our images and also add some metadata to our pages. And then I'll show you uploading to the Adobe Business Catalyst site. All right, so I kind of want to give a disclaimer on showing the responsive design and the breakpoints. Um, there, if you are watching this and your plan is to just follow along and do exactly what I do when it comes to making breakpoints and making your site responsive, it's a little bit more than that. You know, we're all going to have breakpoints at the same exact point, but how your site response to those breakpoints is literally different for every single site. Um, and that's because the way it responds is, is based on the design of your site. So what I am doing to make my personal site responsive is not necessarily the same thing that you will be doing to make your site responsive. So I just wanted to make that clear um right from right from the beginning um you know definitely still watch along so you can get the concepts down and understand pinning and making that mobile menu and all of those things um but you know just because i pin something to the left of the page or i you know set something to scale a certain way does not necessarily mean that's going to work that way for the different elements on your page. So you're going to need to really work with your site this week and figure out what works best for your design. So without further ado, I am going to jump into the announcements and just have a reminder on assignments and assessments. They're due by Saturday for full credit. I do accept late work. However, there will be a 20% deduction. That means that you will start with the, a B and go down from there. Um, if you are going to be late on any of your assignments or assessments, please get in touch with me um, sooner rather than later. Um, your week four assignments cannot be turned in late and your original discussion posts are due by tomorrow at midnight and make sure that you respond to two of your fellow students by Saturday. Also, late discussion posts will not be accepted past the Saturday deadline of the week. Let me hop over into the course for a second. And I know that there's one announcement that I posted. I can't remember if there were two. <laughs> oh, this one. That's right. I posted a link to some useful links for you guys for this week. Um, one is to the subtlepatterns.com. Another is to creativecommons.org, which has royalty-free images. And the third is to an article on 16-pixel body copy from Smashing Magazine. So um, definitely read the article. The Smashing Magazine article, it's really a good article that explains why we use 16 point um, body type or 16 pixel body type. It's, it's definitely a very quick and really interesting read. It's super important to, you know, graphic and web design and explaining why we do the things that we do. And that subtle patterns, those are those tileable patterns that are already created that you can use as the background for your website. All right, back into our slides. So responsive web design. This is a great graphic that really explains what responsive web design is. And it says content is like water. So you put water into the cup, 
and it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle and it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot and it becomes the teapot. The same can be said for the content of our website. So we put the content into our cell phone, whoops, and it becomes a cell phone. We put the content into our screen and it expands to the screen. The content of our website should flow through the container it's in, whether that's an iPhone, a Samsung phone, a tablet, you know, an iPad mini, a laptop, or even an iMac. It should become part of whatever the container is and it should fit that container correctly. So that's why we make our web design and our web sites responsive. They respond, the content responds to the container that the information is being placed in. So this is just a really good graphic that kind of explains that. So I do have a quick video on what is responsive web design that I will play for you. All right, so that's a really good um, quick 60 second video that just shows you, you know, what, what web what responsive web design is and why it is that we design websites to be responsive. So the best parts of responsive web design are the fast load times, easy to use navigation, simple and useful designs, and adaptive orientation and resolution. The term flexible or fluid grid is thrown around when discussing a responsive website, but what is a flexible or a fluid grid? That's my question to you. So think about that for a second. So the fluid grid concept calls for page element sizing to be in relative units like percentages rather than absolute units like pixels or points. So what we may say is the navigation is 20%, the width is 20% of the page. So no matter what size that page is, the navigation is going to be taking up 20% of the size of the page, rather than saying that the navigation is 400 pixels, and then if the website is shrunk down to 360 pixels, the navigation would run off of our screen. Or the navigation can be, you know, 100% of the, of the screen, and it always runs across the entire screen, no matter what size the screen is. Same thing. Flexible images are also sized in relative units, so to prevent them from displaying outside of their containing element. So what that means is, you know, when we are placing that image inside of that accordion um, or the tabbed panel, no matter what size the page is, that image is going to stay within that container. It's not going to run outside of that container. Muse uses adaptive design via a number of static designs that change based on breakpoints in the design, and that's what we're going to go over tonight. This allows your site to be responsive without adding in the coding of media queries, and if anybody has taken a Dreamweaver class, you know what media queries are. The breakpoints add the illusion 
of responsivity as the browser window expands and contracts, and Muse does allow content within the page to expand and contract responsively within the size of the browser, but breakpoints actually aren't a true responsive um, element. You know, true responsive element is actually those media queries, so what Muse does is it kind of fakes it, fakes it until it makes it, in a way. Um, so I just want to explain what media queries are for those of you who haven't used them before. And so you can kind of understand um, the similarities and the differences between media queries and breakpoints. Media queries allow the page to use different um, cascading style rules or CSS style rules based on characteristics of the device the site is being displayed on. So most commonly, that's the width of the browser. Media Queries is a CSS3 module allowing content rendering to adapt to conditions such as screen resolution. So an example might be a smartphone screen versus a computer screen. It became a W3C recommended standard in June of 2012 and is a cornerstone technology of responsive web design. So media queries look at the capability of the device and can be used to check many things such as the width and height of the viewport, that's a, that, the viewport is literally the size of the screen that's on, the width and height of the device itself, the orientation of the device, whether you're holding your cell phone or your tablet, portrait versus landscape, and the resolution of that device. So it looks at all of those things, and then it adapts your website based on the different code that you put in to display correctly, no matter how it's being, whatever size the screen is. So it's a bit difficult to understand this, and that's why that image that I showed you earlier explains exactly how a, re a responsive website works. The content of your website is like water, and the content will fit the container that it is in. So again, if you're really having a hard time kind of grasping what that responsive web design is, you know, the only thing I can see is measure out one cup of water and pour that cup of water into a couple of different glasses and just watch how the content fills those different glasses differently. That's kind of what the content of your website is doing. So the next thing that we're going to do is SEO, and that has to do with putting titles on our pages, um, putting metadata on our pages, and um, doing alt tags on our images. So here's a little quick video on what exactly SEO is. This is Search Engine Optimization, explained by Common Craft, in collaboration with Search Engine Land. Imagine for a minute that you're a librarian, but not a normal one. You're a librarian for every book in the world. People depend on you every day to find the exact book they need. How do you do it? You need a system. You need to know what's inside every book and how books relate to each other. Your system needs to take in a lot of information and spit out the best answers for a patron's questions. It's not an easy job. Search engines like Google and Bing are the librarians of the internet. Their systems collect information about every page on the web so they can help people find exactly what they're looking for. And every search engine has a secret recipe called an algorithm for turning all that information into useful search results. Now, if you own a website, search results matter. When your pages have higher rankings, they help more people find you. The key to higher rankings is making sure your website has the ingredients search engines need for their recipes. This is called search engine optimization, or SEO. As it turns out, most of the big ingredients are known. Let's take a look. First, words matter. Search engines account for every word on the web. This way, when someone searches for shoe repair, the search engines can narrow the results to only the pages that are about those words. Second, titles matter. Each page on the web has an official title, but you may not ever see it because it's in the code. Search engines pay a lot of attention to page titles because they often summarize the page like a book's title. Third, links between websites matter. When one web page links to another, it's usually a recommendation telling readers this site has good information. A web page with a lot of links coming to it can look good to search engines. 
but some people try to fool the search engines by creating or buying bogus links all over the web that point to their own website. Usually, search engines can detect when a site has a lot of them, and they account for it by giving links from trustworthy sites more weight in the recipe. Fourth, the words that are used in links matter too. If your web page says, Amazon has lots of books, and the word books is linked, search engines can establish that Amazon.com is related to the word books. This way, when someone searches for books, that site will rank well. Lastly, search engines care about reputation. Sites with a consistent record of fresh, engaging content and growing numbers of quality links may be considered rising stars and do well in search rankings. These are just the basics, and the recipes are refined and changed all the time. Good SEO is about making sure your website has great content that's supported by the ingredients that search engines need for their recipes. I'm Lee LaFever, and this has been Search Engine Optimization, explained by Common Craft. Learn more about SEO at Search Engine Land. All right, so that's a really good video that explains, um, you know, what matters in SEO. So words matter, titles matter, links matter, the words within your links matter, and the reputation of your site matters. So these are all things that you want to keep in mind when you're thinking about, you know, how you're putting your page together you know, how you're naming the titles on your pages, what you're naming your headlines in your pages, you know, setting up and making sure, remember how I told you, you know, to make an H1 header in your page, that's your main um, headline, you know, SEO search engines, look for what is in that headline of your page because there's only one um, H1 tag per page. So these are all things to think about when you're writing up your copy for your page and putting your pages together. All right, so let's um, get back into Muse. We're going to go over responsive design and breakpoints, adding SEO, and then uploading to Adobe Business Catalyst. We really have a lot on our plate for tonight. All right, so luckily, for me, not really for you. I quit out of Muse before I started this because I just wanted to restart the program um, before we started tonight. And I hit, no, don't save, when it said, do you want to save your site? But luckily I had done a save um, at some point before I did some change. So there might be something I run into that I didn't save from last night, whatever the last thing was that I did. But I thought for certain when I opened this back up, I was going to have to add in my, um, my accordion or my tab panels and my form back in. I was like, Oh no. So, you know, little things, make sure you save, save and save often. Uh, I always, I always like to let people know when, when I've kind of messed something up. So that way you don't do the same thing as me. All right, so we're discussing breakpoints tonight. And breakpoints are the point in your website where the design starts to break. So I'm going to pull up my actual Pixelate site. And I can kind of show you this was created with WordPress, but. Um, it's kind of the same thing because it's, it's a responsive website. So you can see when I start to close the browser, that things start to move and start to get resized. And here's some links down here. And right there, that was a break point. See how everything went down to one column? I've hit a break point in my site, although I don't like, this is why I don't really like WordPress. I don't like how this is clearly not in the center. Um, and then this has started to get, um, this image has started to get, you know, resized. Everything is designed, stays in the center. My logo um, has stay, stayed quite large. And then as soon as I hit this other break point, my navigation moves to underneath my logo. And again, everything else is a one column design. 
and keep closing it. And then boom, this image re re resizes. And this is the mobile version that you would see if you were on a, um, if you were on a cell phone watching this. Oh, hi, I'm glad you were able to make it. We are just discussing um, responsive design and we were about to hop into Muse and do our breakpoints. So you came at a good time. All right, so this is how that my site responds to the change in size of the browser window. So this is what we are going to be doing in Muse is we're going to be adding in those breakpoints. So each time your site hits a breakpoint, the, the site will start to redraw itself to look a specific way within that browser size. So that's what those breakpoints do. And as you can see, one, you know, one breakpoint, this is probably the tablet breakpoint, and then another breakpoint, which is probably the mobile breakpoint. And then this is just the desktop version. So this is how, you know, responsive websites are designed these days. They just start to redraw themselves. And you can watch what happens down here too with the, it goes from being three columns to two columns to one column. So you have to think about how all of the elements on your page will um, will start to redraw themselves. All right, so we want to take a look at what breakpoints we are going to be using. So we need a breakpoint at 768, which is for iPad viewing, and a breakpoint for 360, which is mobile viewing or cell phone. Um, and then we also need to download the mobile menu library file and import it into Muse. So I'm going to do that now. We need to hide the interactive menu and drag the mobile menu into the master, design the mobile menu, hide the mobile menu and other breakpoints. So we're going to go over all of that tonight. And then we need to have some, some SEO and alt tags for our images and our pages need to have titles, descriptions, and metadata. And then we're going to upload it to the Adobe Business Catalyst server, and you will submit the new site to me and the URL that you'll get from Adobe Business Catalyst. All right, so it's, it's a lot for, you know, an assessment, but it's really, really important. And once you, ma once you master all of the things that we are doing this week and last week, the course actually repeats itself going into week three and four. We're just redoing all of the same things, but you'll be making a website for yourself. So once you kind of get this down, you're really good for the rest of the course. We're just kind of repeating exactly what we've done. So, you know, pay, pay attention now. And also if you don't get it exactly this time, you'll be able to see kind of where you went wrong to fix it next time. All right, so one thing I want to let you know also is when you're creating breakpoints, you need to create them in the master, and then you need to go in and create them in all of the pages of your site. So it needs to be done separately. So just because you fix the breakpoints in the master does not mean that your site is good to go on all your other pages. So this is something that you have to keep in mind. You're going to have to kind of keep almost repeating yourself each time. And like I said, you know, the breakpoints and how, we'll all have the same breakpoints. We'll have the 768 and the 360. However, how your content fits into those breakpoints is not going to be the same as how my content fits into those breakpoints. So you're not going to be able to follow along exactly and do exactly what I did and end up with the same results because everybody's design is different. So you're going to have to tailor your um, design of each breakpoint to the design of your website overall. All right, so those are all my disclaimers for tonight. Um, 
you know what? You probably wouldn't use more breakpoints in the real world. I don't think that that's necessary. Um, the reason why is, is most tablets are set up to be that, that size and most cell phones are set up to be that size. So if you have those three breakpoints, in theory, it should work no matter what website you're creating. It, you know, it's just a good rule of thumb to use, um, you know, I have 1200 pixels for my desktop design, which is what um, I started with. I'm gonna go down to 768 and go down to 360. So it's really, um, you should have probably, did they give you specific breakpoints or did you have to come up with them on your own? Hmm. I feel, I feel as though, and we're discussing in the chat right now, the old Muse class. Um, I feel as though that course in the last couple of months has been rewritten and it more closely mirrors this course now. So as far as like the breakpoints and things like that. So it might be different now. And it is one of those things where some people do extra breakpoints, but I honestly, I don't think I'm of the I'm of the KISS family, the keep it simple, stupid family. Like, you know what? If you can do it you know, in three steps, why do it in eight? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just my way of doing things. I, I like efficiency in my design. I like simplicity in my design. You know, I'm a big fan of don't reinvent the wheel. You know, the wheel's been around for a very long time. Work smart, exactly. Work smarter, not harder. Exactly. So I'm a big fan of that. So I feel as though three breakpoints, I don't, I don't feel like you need more than that. Um, you can you know, there might be a point where you're saying, you know, my design is breaking between breakpoint A and breakpoint B, and there seems to be nothing that I can do to not get that design to completely break. And if I added another breakpoint in, it'll fix it, then fine. But I don't think that there's a need to go and just willy nilly do a breakpoint every 50 pixels. So that, that, that's my take on it. All right, so I'm gonna start with the master. And I'm going to go into my library and I'm going to add in the um, menu that I just downloaded. And again, I'm working out of my working site. So when I do the same thing that you did in week one, after you fix everything, it looks good and it's ready to go, what you're gonna wanna do is do a file save as and save it as the assessment name. So that way you don't mess up, you know, your working site by having 8 million different um, file names. All right, so let me find that thing I downloaded. There we go. The Muse Pen, I'm gonna put it in my widgets folder. and go into my library. In the same way that I added the other um, third-party widgets, I'm going to add it in. I'm gonna import it into just the library, not into the widgets library, the, just the library. Close this up, so not confusing. It's called Muse Pen Mobile Dropdown Menu, M-U lib for library. And the last time I used this, randomly enough, was in 2015. So hopefully it still works the same way. All right, so there it is, Muse Pen drop down. And what that is going to do is that's gonna replace our menu widget that we added last week at those breakpoints. So let me just close this up for a second. So where you add the breakpoints in, if you, you know, if, you, if you're not remembering from the last time you took your Muse class, and I think almost everybody got back to me on my poll and said that they had taken a Muse class before, so that's good. Um, and, but I'm sure if you haven't done it in a while, you, you need a little bit of a refresher, so no problem. Um, 
uh, here's where we're going to add in the breakpoints in this purple bar up here. And you can use the scrubber, this is the scrubber, to drag your site and close it until you get to where those breakpoints are. And what I am going to do is I am going to start at 360 and work my way up to the 768 rather than work my way down because I feel like it's a lot easier to make elements larger than it is to make them smaller. So let's start to close this up. And one other thing that I've noticed, and I don't know if they fixed it in this update, is I used to always have a very hard time making the 360 breakpoint if I did not get it right on 360 in the ruler. So let me just try and see if it'll let me. So I'm gonna hit, let's say I got as far as um, 367 or wherever I'm at. And I'm going to hit the plus sign up here in the, in the purple bar to create a new breakpoint. And I'm gonna double click on that breakpoint and it's set at 367. Let me see if it'll let me manually put in 360. Okay. No, and it doesn't. For some reason, I do not know why. And I, I feel that it's because it's so close to this 320 minimum width and it's just some sort of a glitch in the code. It will not let you type in 360. So you need to really zoom in and let go on 360 to get a 360 breakpoint. However, for 768, it'll let you it'll let you um, type it in. Why? Because it's trying to drive me bananas. I, I don't know. Um, and you can see once I get into the side size, everything is running all over the page. Um, I'm not going to be using this menu, but I can't just go, oh, I'm, I'm not going to use this menu and hit delete because watch what happens. If I go into my 1200 breakpoint, it's missing there as well. So I got to do a command Z. So what I need to do is I need to start hiding certain things in different breakpoints. So if I know that my logo needs to be in this breakpoint, but I want to be in a different place, and it also needs to be in this breakpoint, what I do is I go down to my 360 breakpoint. Again, this can get a little bit confusing, so just do your best to follow along with me. <laughs> um, I'm going to make a copy of my logo, my menu down here, and these items. So I'm gonna make a copy, and then I'm gonna to go to this, this, basically all of this, all of this, all of this, but not the black bar. And I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna say hide in breakpoint. And it'll go, it'll be missing. Then I'm going to do an edit, paste in place. And now I can start to redesign these elements within this breakpoint because they are different than the elements in this breakpoint. And you may have to double check. Um, sometimes. It will also paste them into the 1200 breakpoint. So you just want to kind of double check and see what ends up happening. So I'm going to make my logo big, whoops, my logo bigger in this breakpoint. And I'm gonna center it in my grid. I'm gonna do all of these things like before I take care of dragging in that mobile menu. I'm gonna close this up a bit. Bring this up here and or maybe I should expand this. I should probably expand this. Bring this down here. So I'm gonna copy this image. And then I'm going to hide the original image in this breakpoint. 
and do an edit, paste in place, and I'm gonna expand it a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'll crop this one with my crop tool. All right. There, that looks a little bit better. I'm gonna have to drag that black bar down too. There we go. All right, so I can double check my 1200 pixels and make sure, all right, that still looks correct. And if you get in here and, you know, you have another logo in the center over here and you have another image over here and all of those things. Oh, thank you. My husband came up with that, <laughs> came up with the pixelate. That was, that was unfortunately not me. He was like, get it when some, like when images are pixelated. And I was like, whoa, that's awesome. Very smart indeed. Yeah, and that's why I keep him around. He's a, he's a pretty awesome designer. <laughs> so if you get into the 1200 um, breakpoint and you notice that you have a second logo and you have a second image and you have, you know, kind of doubles of everything that we're doing, what you can do is select those in this breakpoint, right click and hide them in this breakpoint. So just keep that in mind that um, sometimes that can happen and it doesn't mean necessarily that you did something wrong. It's just sometimes it happens. I find that sometimes weird things happen. All right. Cool. So I'm going to focus now on my footer. And as you can see, my links down here and these links and these links, everything's just kind of all over the place. Um, so let me expand this. I don't really want to go because I mean, when you think about selecting something with your fingers on a mobile phone. I don't want to go too small with my navigation links. to move some of these around and make the YouTube a little bit bigger. Yeah, I'll set up like that. Close this up. Group these. And align them. And again, you can see that I'm kind of following my grid here that I have set up. Could even bring YouTube down here, but I'm gonna kind of leave YouTube up here, I guess. And maybe I'll center Facebook. There we go. Yeah, get everything all nice and stacked up. All right, so next thing that we need to think about is pinning items where they need to go. And what the pinning does is it, it tells the, you know, it tells your website as the browser is changing, you know, that this item needs to, you know, stay in the center. It needs to stay to the left. It needs to stay to the right as my browser is starting to, you know, resize. So this is one of those things where pinning is kind of confusing and not the same thing that works for me is going to work for you. You need to kind of use your scrubber and watch and see what's happening when you start to pin elements um, on, you know, on on your on the screen. Um, so I'm going to start with pinning my logo in the center and pinning this image in the center. This I'm going to pin in the center. 
this, because these are two separate elements, this one I'm going to pin to the left and this one I'm gonna to pin to the left also. And then this one, I'm gonna try pinning to the center, but because the actual bounding box is big, it might not work. So I'm gonna to have to op use my scrubber and see. So I hit my break point. You can see what happens. See how it when it leaves that break point because we haven't made that new one yet, how the whole design changes. But sometimes you might have a screen that's a little bit different, smaller than 360. So let's see what starts to happen. And we're good up until about 320. And honestly, there's not really going to be anything that goes smaller than 320. I don't even think that there is a a screen that's smaller than 320 at this point. So next I'm going to add in that mobile um, menu. So I'm gonna to go to library and drag in that Muse Pen mobile dropdown. And remember, it's, a, it's my menu, kind of like my menu widget was, so I need to make sure it's within my header area. You know, I can't have it in the body of my site. And this menu is old is the best way to, is, is the best way to put it. So when whoever created this widget created it, I want to say back when Muse was in 2015.0. And you would open up the options and there were all of these options for this widget. I know it's so 2015.0, not even point two because I ran into this when I was teaching in 2015.2. It's just so 2015.0. So there are no options anymore within this mobile menu, which is kind of a bummer. You used to be able to change the little hamburger icon and the X, and um, I'm not even sure if you can change the font anymore. Let me see. I might be able to change the font. Let me try. Oh, you can change the font. All right, well, that's good. Um, but yeah, so you're kind of limited in what you can do. So you want the X to close all, you want, you can have overlapping items below. I believe you want this checked, the overlapping items below. And the reason why I say that is otherwise when the menu opens, it will overlap the body copy on your page. And I can show you that real quick. So here's the mobile menu. I'm gonna go to my working, I'm gonna go over here and see what happened. It added that menu in the other breakpoint, not just the 360 breakpoint. So let me close it up to the 360 breakpoint for a second. And with it, without it overlapping, it's behind, my menu is now behind my text on this page. So that's why you wanna check that. So let me open this up. And if you go overlap items below, and we'll go to the whole page again, Oh, uh, let me close it out. Hold on. Why is it not doing that? Why are you not doing this? Maybe save it. Overlap items below. Yes. Save. File. Save site. <laughs> And here you can also see how that, it, it gives you the little arrow where the breakpoint's supposed to be, but it's not actually there. And it's not overlapping. Oh, good grief. All right. 
Nope, I definitely don't want to send you to the back. Oh, it's running. Nope, it's not running. Maybe it's because it's running outside my page. Hold on. Start to close this up. Overlap items below. Overlap items. Overlap items. <laughs> Keep checking all of the items. A new top level vertical, uniform size. And why did you not resize? Oh my goodness. Yeah, this thing's kind of a pain now that you don't. You know, Lord. All right, click, click. There we go. Select these items. Select these items. I'm not a fan of this thing. I'm not going to lie. I find it very... Why? Why are you doing this? All right. All right, that worked. No? All right, that can overhang over there. Whatever, at least it's within. So you can see that you're going to have to kind of mess with it a bit to get it to work. All right. Um, you can't change the fill, like I said. Um, you used to be able to change the icons, and you can't do that, but you can change the font. So make sure that the font um, of the menu matches the font of your site, and it'll be a different font when it's open and closed. So you're gonna to have to change it in both places. And then you can change the font down in the content area. Just kind of click, 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 click. Wouldn't we want it not to overlap? Well, you want it to, you want it to be over the items below it. But let me, hold on. It's been a long day. It's like a, Tuesday is like a Monday times two for me. Let me double check this. We might be onto something. Nope, it's still doing it. Happens when I go preview. Watch it work in preview or something. Oh, all right. I'm just getting errors left and right here. But this is what the menu does. So you can see, let me close this out, go back into the master. Whoops which I closed. Overlap items. Preview. Could not generate code to enable one or more web fonts on the page home. I'll have to double check that. And it's still doing the same thing. So if this happens to you, I'm not going to, um, Oh, <laughs> why did that font change? I have a feeling that this is my muse. So hold on one second. I have a feeling something weird's happening with my muse. Like my font is like fell off for no reason. Let me just restart muse. Because when in doubt, just restart the program. I, I can't tell you how many times. You should see when I have to teach a Dreamweaver class. I, my Dreamweaver crashes all the time. Right, it's a pun, <laughs> not amusing. Let's see if we can get past doing the mobile menu today at the rate we're going. All right.
and can close all, edit together, overlap items below. I'm just gonna leave it like that and really seriously hope for the best. And this doesn't need to be as big. But probably not gonna want me to. Here, we'll try that. We'll see if it's because it was running into my footer. There we go. And the font looks correct now. And there's some white bar that's showing up too. Um, what has a white stroke on it? That doesn't. I can see a white stroke. I don't know what part of this mobile menu has a white stroke. Oh, right here. When it's open, it has a white stroke. So you can turn that off. There we go. Let's try unclicking edit together. Let's see if it'll let me close this up. Nope. <laughs> I hate this thing. <laughs> I didn't say that though. I totally didn't say that. Edit together. All right, there we go. All right, does it fit in the page? Can you close it and open it? It's fine, yeah. Exactly, all right. So I'm gonna go into my 1200 breakpoint and right here is that mobile menu and I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say hide in breakpoint because it shouldn't be showing in this breakpoint because I'm using this menu in that breakpoint. So let's double check that that happened. Close my scrubber window. And at this point, that shouldn't show up until I hit right there. There we go. You can see I have a lot of things I'm gonna have to fix um, between the 1200 and the 768 breakpoint. But again, I want to start at a smaller breakpoint, the 360, and work my way up from there. All right, so the next breakpoint I'm going to do is the 768. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of get in there and kind of tweak each breakpoint and see, you know, how they do. So I'm gonna start to close this. And I'm gonna get as far as, as close as I can to 768. It's pretty good. And then 768 should allow me to retype in 768. So I'm gonna double click, do 768. There we go. That one lets you change it. It's when you get too close to the 320 for some reason, it won't let you change it, which is the minimum width of the page. I've run into this one all the time. All right, so in this breakpoint, I'm not going to be using this menu again. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hide it in this breakpoint. However, I am going to be using this logo and all of this stuff. So to make my life easier, I've already started to kind of stack things how I want them in the 360 breakpoint. So in the 768, I'm gonna select everything except for the black bar and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say hide in breakpoint and then I'm gonna go into 360. I'm gonna copy, go into the 768 breakpoint and I'm gonna paste in place. And why didn't it do that? Why didn't you do that? Menu, boom. I have everything. Ah, and I pasted it in place here. And X. 
Why? Why are you doing this? No. Copy. Close this a little bit. Paste. <laughs> My computer hates me this evening. All right. Let me command Z. It, it, there's a good chance that this will work for you and it's literally my computer being ridiculous right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out from where I was, where all of the items from the 1200 breakpoint were here. Let me make sure I'm that far. All right. Edit. Redo. There we go. All right. So I am going to hide my menu in this breakpoint. And then I'm going to copy these items from this breakpoint. Copy. Hide in breakpoint. Paste in place. There we go. And wait for my computer to catch up with me. Right, there is always a workaround. And you know what? It's, this is what I mean about how, like, you can't really follow exactly along with me and no two sites ever work the same. Um, you know, this isn't going to set up the exact same way as it did the last time I taught this course because I set up the site a little bit differently last time. Because every time, I'm sure, if, if you've ever designed something, even if you design it a couple of times, every time you do it, it comes out a little bit different, especially, you know, seeing as I'm trying to show everyone certain things and some people have certain questions so the easiest way to deal with the question is to kind of like you know build it on the site in front of you so it means that the site never looks the same each time i teach this class which means that the breakpoints never look the same and the design of each breakpoint never looks the same so i'm always kind of designing on the fly with you. So you can kind of see my process, but sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes my process can feel a little bit, you know, scatterbrained because I'm trying to do this on the fly while I'm, you know, doing everything else. What is that? I don't know what this is. Oh, that was a guide. Okay. All right. So let's again read. Oh, geez. And I pasted. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is one of those times where I said it might show up in the other one. It might be in there twice. Select these, and I'm going to do hide in breakpoint, and this should be the original one. So this is the one underneath. This should be the other ones, and then select this. This can be a little bit confusing. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements, and hide in other breakpoints. There we go. All right. Whew. <laughs> so, just to explain what I have done. All right. So, now, because I, I had told you, you know, when you start to get into some of the other breakpoints and you start, you know, hiding things and showing things and copying items, it might show up in your original one. So what I had to do was I was trying to figure out which is the one that I copied, which I want in the 768 breakpoint, which is the original one that was in the 1200 breakpoint. And by original, I mean original elements, like this logo, my, um, 
my links down here in the footer, my other footer items. So what I had to do was I had to select the items on the 1200 breakpoint, these items, and I right clicked and I said, you know, hide them in other breakpoints. If I click show it, they would show up in the other breakpoints because they were showing up in the 768 breakpoint and I want to redesign the 768 breakpoint for things to be a little bit more organized because you can see they're kind of falling off the, the side of the page here. So these are some of the things that you're going to have to do and, and that's why you know it's never a one-step process doing this. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, also probably gonna Close this up a bit, bring this up here, and again, bring in that mobile menu. Make sure it's inside of my header, it's not overlapping something else. And when I click on this, I'm going to hide in other breakpoints because I already have this mobile menu in my 360 breakpoint right here and I don't want it to show up in my 1200 breakpoint. All right, now I have to change all the fonts again. Same thing I just did. Do all the ridiculous things that I did once already. I had that as bold. I know I had it as all caps, and I definitely made the font a little bit bigger and closed it up to keep it out of the footer and extended it. And honestly, I should change it from this purple. Yes, every time you add a copied element, best rule of thumb is to do a hide in other breakpoints. Um, definitely. Definitely, definitely. All right, so I'm going to change the purple background. I didn't do it on my other breakpoint, but I'm going to make it this blue, my um, pixelate blue instead, and change the font. So you can change all of the different, um, nor the different states, just like you did in your other one. So my rollover, Maybe I'll do that hot pink again, just for, just for fun. Um, mouse down, that's fine. And active, I kind of like the blue. And fine. Now I need to do the same exact thing in the 360, but I'll go back to doing that after. All right, so. This logo, I think I'm going to leave this over to the left in this breakpoint and see, oh, this thing, I knew this was going to happen. I'm going to try, can responsive with, let's see what happens. Change that to responsive with and pin it to the right. See what happens. All right, that's good. All right, good. But I don't like what's happening with this image. So this image, I'm gonna say none for this image. I don't want it to resize. I just want it to kind of close up, which is fine. But I want this to stay in the window so I'm going to pin it to the right, which means that the right-hand side stays where it is, and the left-hand side will kind of run off the screen. I think that'll make more sense when we hit the three. There it is. It's almost a seamless transition then. All right, and then my logo, I want to pin to the left. And I want to see if I can get away with this not resizing. It might be, might be cutting it close. Definitely cutting it close. Let's see what letter 
I have an idea of how to fix this. Uh, might be able to resize it. But the only thing I don't like is it starts to resize before it needs to, and then it gets really small. This is where, you know, the media queries are a little bit better than the breakpoints, and writing actual CSS code is a little bit better, because um, that's kind of weird that it does that. Um, let me pin this to the left. Let's see how, how big I can get this. And let's see what happens now. I mean, it kind of fixes itself, but hmm, I'm gonna have to let me see what happens when I center align it and pin it to this. Whoops. This needs to stay pinned to the right. This needs to be pinned to the center. This needs to stay pinned to the right. And I need to deal with the footer after all that too. So part of the, you know, you might get it right in the actual breakpoint, but you have to think about what's happening in between your breakpoints. How do you remove a pin? To remove a pin, just select it again and it takes it off, it, it, it uncolors it. So when it's colored in white, it's pinned. When you click it again, it turns it off. Nope, no worries. It, it's a little bit, like I said, you know, you're gonna have to kind of play around with it. And like I said, so this pinned, you know, just pinned to the right means that this image is gonna stay against the right hand side of the page and it'll run off the page on the left. If I pinned it to the left, it would stick to the it, the left hand side of the, sta the, the stage. The page would be sticky and it would run off the right. And if I st stay to the center, watch, I'll just do a center one, it'll run off on both sides. See what it, so you gotta figure out what works best for your design, like your header image. And because of the placement of this blue square, pinning it to the right really makes the most sense for me. So that's why I'm doing it this way. If you were kind of wondering how I figured that out, and I'm trying to just figure out what's best for the logo for this one. So centered. It just gets so small right before the 360. But that might be the best I can do. All right. So we'll just we'll leave that as like that. Now I got to deal with this footer. I'm going to move this right here. I'm going to line this one up with it and line this up with it. I don't. I don't have an option for this to resize, which kind of sometimes happens with these widgets. I'm gonna set this to none because it'll get really small otherwise. And this one, I'm gonna set to none as well. I'm going to pin these three items to the right, but there's a chance I might have to group them together. And then I'm gonna fix these items. And anytime you have text boxes, you need to um, you need to expand them as much as you can because as things start to close, let's say, all right, here's an example. Like the text fits in these text boxes like this. And you have tons of room right here. But watch what happens right here when I start to close things. It's going to start to shrink these text frames even though it doesn't have to just because it doesn't understand not to do that, if that makes sense. So watch what happens with those um, text boxes. They start to close and close in on themselves before I hit the next breakpoint. So 
you can see that that's not going to work. So I'm going to need to rethink the location of this. I'm going to move this down here. Open this up wider and I'm hoping I'm going to get enough space that these won't run into each other. So let's see if that happens. That's gonna be close. But you can see we're opening up the text boxes. The font isn't running outside of the text frame now, at least. All right, so that's not gonna work. So I need to stack these elements a little bit differently. So let's do this then. Again, make sure I line everything up before I have to drop a rule. And I can consider centering these. Centering these underneath. And we'll try that now. And there is a lot of space between these three links, but the reason for that is these text frames are going to start to close up. <laughs> yeah, I tend to like be like, hmm, 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 when I'm designing. I know, I sound, I sound kind of crazy. I sound like I'm eating something. All right, so let's see how this goes. Oh, whoops. I still had these pinned to the right. So let me repin. Let me group these three items. Pin them to the center. And I might need to do responsive width and height. See if we make it to 360. Which, if it's close enough, oh, something weird happened here. I have an extra YouTube. How do I have an extra YouTube? Hmm. Okay. That is so weird. How'd that happen? I might have. Do you have an extra one of these? Oh, I've, oh come on. <laughs> delete, delete. I know when this happened. Delete. What about you? Try it again. Ugh. Undo, 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 undo. You guys. And you guys. Hide another breakpoints. All right, let's try this again. For some reason, it's always the 768 breakpoint. There, all right. And it's really close enough, uh, you know, honestly, it's starting to run off a little, whoops, a little bit in the center here, but you can still select those buttons um, with your fingers, and that's really something I'm looking for, because if I set these 
to be responsive, um, what's going to end up happening is this logo is going to get super small as it starts to resize itself. So that's really not going to work. It's kind of going to be the same thing that happened with the, the Pixel 8 logo, but at least that didn't get so small that it doesn't logically make any sense. All right, so let's go back into that 360 breakpoint for a second, and so I can change the mobile menu, the colors here, the different states. So I want to change that fill to the blue. There we go. Text to black. It's my normal rollover is going to be purple and white or magenta and white because that's fun. And I'm going to leave mouse down and active how I have it. All right. And I'll leave this one as responsive. And pin to the right. Centered, centered. All right. Let's see. And that brings us to the 1200, which we need to look at, you know, how we're going to pin some of these items. All right. So my menu here, I am going to pin this to the right because I want to stay, I want to stay over here to the right. And then I'm going to pin my logo to the left. I want my menu to have a responsive width. And then for some reason, these items were getting a little weird. I don't know why it was doing that. Oh, come on. My sub menus. Hmm. Well, let's see what happens with none. Let's see if we can run it. Before it runs into the logo. All right, I have a double of my logo here. Okay. It's, it's got to be an extra. Delete this one. This can happen when you make copies of things. Just make sure when you delete something that you didn't delete it from a different breakpoint. Somehow accidentally made copies on this breakpoint as well. So these probably all have something on top of it. All right. Still there. Still there. All right. So just remember that you're going to need to basically like double check things 10,000 times. It's just that that's what ends up happening. All right. My logo, I want it to resize because there's no way I'm going to make it to the 768 without my logo resizing. I want to pin that to the left. My menu, however, I want to hope that I don't need to resize it. So I'm, and I'm gonna pin it to the right. So I'm gonna try to move this over here to see if I can get, give myself enough room before it runs into my logo and if I can make it to that 768 breakpoint. I saw in the video this week that selecting the trash automatically makes it the normal state. Oh, interesting. All right, so let's see what happens when I start to do this. See how far we can make it. 
How is there still one more logo there? Good Lord, how many times did I do that? <laughs> oh, I know that there was like one point where I was like, Dad, copy, paste, 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 and yeah. Thanks, self. Good grief. All right, that was all of them. There we go, all right. <laughs> so every time I do this, I have to repin it because I was, you know, working with the one on top. All right. All right, one more time. Oh, I know it's gonna run into my logo. Hmm, all right. I'm gonna have to resize this, this bad boy. So I'm gonna make it responsive. So because I have to resize it, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger right off the bat so it doesn't get so small by the time it gets to the 768 um, size. Fix these submenus too. All right, so let's try this. This should still be pinned, come on, pinned to the right. This should be pinned to the left. I don't know why these parts aren't resizing the submenus. They should move along. It's not like you can normally see them. It's not like they're always open, but still. Ooh, it runs into it a little bit, but it's not so close for comfort that we can't work with it. So let's see. Close it up a little bit. All right, one time. So again, not an exact science. You got to really work with these things. All right, there we go. And this is running off the page. I'm going to group. All right, I'm going to change YouTube to not resize. This one, not resize. And this one doesn't have that option. And again, I'm gonna open these text boxes up. Oh, and apparently I have multiples of those. <laughs> All right, I have an extra portfolio on. Nope. Open these up a bit. I'm gonna pin this to the left. Do responsive with. Going to group these three elements together and pin them to the right and we'll see how this works. All right, so this time I'm gonna keep an eye on my footer. Oh, I've got an extra YouTube in there too. Or an extra everything. Hold on, double check. I didn't delete it in a different, all right. We're all still there, we're all still there, all right. I always wanna double check that it's just a duplicate and that you're not you didn't forget to hide it. Oh, Muse is always messing with me. Yes. Muse is always, always messing with me. All right, so I'm gonna close this up because I didn't need. All 
It's not equal. So even though you think you've gotten your design completely down, you might need to still mess with things a bit to my trusty rectangle. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. What the heck? How do, really? <laughs> Again, my rectangles for measurement. All right. Let's keep an eye on my footer and try this again. Oh, and it made it. And even, should even bring this over a little bit. Line it up with the logo. Why did you not move? <laughs> All right, there we go. And try it one more time. All right. All right, all right. So, and now that you've done all of that in your master page, yes, exactly, the power of the rectangle. I'm gonna write a book on that. Now that you've done that all in the master page, you get to do it all over again in each of the individual pages. So I'm going to do a save site as, oh, whoops, save site, not save site as. And because it is 7.30, I want to, or 7.30 my time, I don't know what time it is where you are. Um, I am going to move on to doing some of the SEO. So basically what you would do is when you go into um, your page, each page, so I'm in the home page right now, you will see these little ticks. Those are where you put breakpoints in your master page. So you can click on them and create a new breakpoint right on the page you are in, and you don't need to try to get it exact, but just clicking the tick and clicking the plus sign. But you're going to need to re, um, you know, fix everything, basically, resize everything in each of your breakpoints. So text does not resize very well your headlines. So you're going to have to, you know, do the whole copying and um, pasting with um, some text boxes and then hiding them in other breakpoints so that way um, see how the words are all running out there you go um, you can change the size so you're gonna need to really work with these text boxes work with um, the slideshow in each of your breakpoints. You're going to need to work with um, the form in your breakpoint. And the accordion or tabbed panel that you did. So some of these, you'll notice like your form, you don't get a resize option. Um, but you can pin them in certain areas. So depending on where you have your form, you might need to start to stack your elements on your page going from a two, um, a two column layout to a one column layout in different breakpoints. So just be aware of, you know, in between the, the breakpoints as you scrub through what's happening to your design. And make sure that you add the breakpoints on each page. You got to add those breakpoints in. So click the tick right here, that white arrow or white tri triangle, and hit the plus sign 
to add those breakpoints to your page. And someday, this stupid thing will go to the back. Let me see. Send to back. Yeah. Ugh. And if somebody figures out the mobile menu, because I'm probably, it's because I'm talking and trying to think at the same time, which is, you know, you guys are artists. You understand. Um, if somebody, like, if you figure it out and you're like, well, Shannon, you were supposed to hit this, just let me know and I will set, I will put it in a, an announcement <laughs> because there's a good chance that I'm literally just missing something really stupid. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about SEO and what we need to do. So we need to have alt tags for our images. We have to have titles for our pages, descriptions, and metadata. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to do um, the alt tags first, because there's kind of two different ways that you can do it. You can um, select each image and do window. Asset, double click, edit image property, sorry, and put in the alt text, um, you know, by selecting the image, or you can go to window assets and just go up your list so you don't miss anything. Click on the image, right click, edit image properties, under where it says alternate text, um, name your images. So you can, um, you should name them based on what is in the image. Because if your image doesn't load, it will show that, alter, uh, that alt text in its place. So if you just have it called image one, that doesn't really tell a user, and it definitely doesn't tell a search engine what's going on there. Because remember, search engines are looking for specific things. So if somebody Googles um, ocean waves, and I have named my images because they are pictures of ocean waves, ocean waves. It's going, Google's gonna say, oh, this website has ocean waves. And even better, if I got more specific and I said, you know, ocean waves, little Compton, because that's Rhode Island, because that's where this is located. And hit okay. So you're gonna do that for each of your images. And you know, if they're all the same, you can kind of name them the same. But they should each have, you know, a, a good name to them. So go down through your whole list. Um, you know, when you get to your the logo, the independent logo, and this is what I mean about doing it in the assets panel. So my logo shows up in three different places in my um, website. So if, if I did the drop down, I would have to select them all individually. If I keep it closed and right click, I can edit image properties for all of them and name it Pixel 8 Design Logo. And that'll edit the alt tags for every place that it's located, see? Um, my header image, same thing. Pixel 8 design. Um, background, I'll just say. You know, give the YouTube logo. Name it YouTube. And make sure that you're spelling things correctly. Yes, you know what? You would typically um, you would typically try to remember to do this when you put place the images on the page. But I do know a lot of people who just kind of go through at the end and go through the assets panel and just do it all at once. Then, because sometimes when you're just in the throes of designing, you forget to do those alt tags. So it's kind of one of the things be that you do before you publish your site. You go through and you double check all of your assets and make sure nothing's missing. Um, make sure, like, see how the background is missing actually to those um, 
to those two to the mobile thing like that's going to come up missing because they didn't give us those images and it used to just show up that it was fine so that's going to happen um but yeah you know if you can remember i mean you'll definitely be doing yourself a, a favor in the you know if you can remember to do it one of the things that i always there's always something that everybody seems to forget to do and whenever i am designing a website i have to actually put a sticky on my computer and say don't forget alt tags whenever i am in dreamweaver i'll get like four pages deep and i'll realize oh man i didn't change the alt tags on any of my images when i put them in my site that seems to be the thing i forget all the time and we all have one of those things that we just forget so you know if you know like all right i need to do each of these things make yourself a checklist you know when i'm not teaching a class where i see it right there in the assignment i have to make myself a checklist but otherwise you know i'm 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 pretty good and um yeah that, that's why it's, it's sometimes good to just double check you know even against the assessment as i'm going because seriously like i get in the throes of designing it and i forget about the little nitty-gritty items um that need to be done so the next thing we need to do is make sure that all pages have a title so that's pretty easy i'm on my home page i'm going to go to page page properties go to options and the page name is called home um, but right down here where it says page title I want to uncheck same as home page and I want to say home you know pixel 8 design because that's what's going to be searched in um, Google if somebody's searching for pixel 8 design I want them to come to my site so I need to put that in my page um, title and then you know what you might do is do page title home independence university and then for your degrees page um degrees independence university and then we'll go into the metadata and the in here you want to put in some keywords and your keywords should have commas in between them and make sure that you're spelling things correctly and your keywords make sense to this page so for me this page and my entire site are about um they're about graphic design so i'm going to do graphic design web design um photography illustration yada 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 and i'll hit okay and that adds all of the information just into the code. And I need to do this for each page. So for my contact page, I would need to go into page properties and say, um, again, graphic design, web design, um, photography, contact us, you know, maybe Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you know, stuff like that. Like, you know, um, you know, different keywords about what I'm doing. If you guys are on the degrees page, I would put in some keywords about the different degrees that are offered. Um, you know, like Adobe, Illustrator, um, Photoshop, Muse, you know, like different programs that you're gonna learn in those degrees. Those are great keywords to put in. And then under options again, I'm gonna uncheck same as page title, I'm gonna put contact, Pixel 8 design. If I do it up here in the page name, it's gonna change literally the name of my page and the in the name that's in my um in my navigation. So that's why you need to make sure that you uncheck that. And include page with a hyperlink, blah 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 blah. Okay. And make sure I'm not missing something. Descriptions, we did that, titles, and the metadata, yes. The metadata is <sighs> the description. If you type in, I think it's up here, find contact 
page. One of these does something weird. And hit OK. It adds it in somewhere. One of these does something weird. Object page. Maybe it's HTML for head. It'll like put your type up in the top. It's one of those. So just make sure um, that you're just putting your keywords in here. Um, you know, I think it might be the description. It does something weird. Let me try that. Hold on and hit okay. Try previewing it. <laughs> Still doing something weird with those fonts, and I don't know why. Preview page and browser. Oh, it didn't do it. All right. I used to put it up there. I don't know why. Something's going weird with my um, font. It fell off, and I don't know why that happened, because it's a web-safe font. So I've got something... I definitely have something weird going on with my muse today. I think my computer needs to be restarted. All right, so save that. Next, moving right along, not gonna lie, I'm, I'm happy with the pace we're going at tonight. Next, we're gonna upload the website to the web server and submit the URL. This is definitely the most difficult part of the evening. Brace yourselves. Brace yourselves for, for this. We're going to go to publish. We're going to hit, it's going to tell you any errors. Two links to assets are being upsampled. You should resize them smaller. That means that you place something too big or you have an image that's like really big and you can resize it in Photoshop if you want or you can leave it. It's fine. Click OK. This site will now link to your Typekit account. Yep, definitely want that to happen. And an unknown authentication error has occurred using your Adobe ID. That, that sounds about right this evening, the way things are going. Clearly, this is working. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, hold on. Um, type kit. I'm sure I'm signed in. I'm definitely signed in. Sign in over here. Let me try that again. <laughs> Why? Oh, man. All right. So what would end up happening is it would say OK, and then it would literally give you the URL. I don't know what is wrong with my muse tonight. That's absolutely so annoying right now. Oh. My creative cloud, I'm clearly signed in. I had probably is why my fonts were acting weird. So I'll try this one more time. And then if I can't get this to work, this last time. What I will do, yes, exactly. Does that have to use a glass of wine? I can, uh, like, as this is going on, um, I can hear my daughter upstairs screaming for my husband. I feel so bad for him right now. Um, so what I will do is if I can't get this to work, it's because I need to restart my machine. I will do this um, tomorrow, and I'll make you guys an extra video, and I'll just post it in the announcements that shows me pressing the button. <laughs> <You know? laughs> or I'll figure out what is going on with this. Okay. did something very weird. It didn't show me as being logged in. Oh, 
I'm gonna have to look up that uh, that error. All right, so I will have to do that for you guys. I'm gonna have to see if restarting my machine fixes this. I do apologize for that. Um, but this is how we do the breakpoints. And again, you saw how long it took me to set up the breakpoints for my master page. So just keep that in mind when you're working on your sites this week. Think of you know you have a couple, you have two pages that you need to do this to plus the master page. So if you're not used to doing this all the time and you're going to have to kind of, you know, take your time, do this, try it again, try it again. Really um, make sure that you're giving yourself enough time. Don't wait until Friday to start your homework this week, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, if you need some help, please make sure you're getting in with the learning coaches. Um, Christy has hours Wednesday through Friday of this week. Um, yes, exactly. Um, and um, thank you again for being able to make it tonight and for everybody who's watching. And I'll make that extra video for you. And I will try to do that tomorrow, just because it's a little bit late here. And um, I'll get that into the announcements. But literally, it's pressing the publish button and following the prompts. So um, have a good night, everyone. And I will talk to you later and see you next week.